We can find Raish in a prominent place at the very beginning of Genesis or of Torah. In Hebrew, the Raish starts with a B in front of it. The B in Hebrew is in the word I-N, the preposition. Bereshith bara Elohim is the Hebrew. The English translation is, in the beginning, God created. So, Resh is the actual first word of what we called, call the Bible. It's startling to think of the letters of the alphabet being both letters and numbers. But that's exactly the situation with the ancient Greek alphabet and the Hebrew alphabet. Each letter is also a number. So this film is going to be a contemplation of the letters of the rota square as numbers. And what's so special about this is that groups of letters in other words, words, can be represented as numbers and numbers can be represented as words. In Hebrew, this is called gematria and the plural gematrio. In fact, we can see here with the rota square, we get the English word borrowed from the Hebrew, cipher, which in English means both number, as in the expression, the old-fashioned expression, he was good with his ciphers, or he was good at cipher, and as a code, as in secret code, as in the word decipher. So in the Rotas code here, uh, let's start with the top line with the S, far right top line, and let's go to the left, to the left of the S, to the letter A, and diagonally to the E, and we get AE, or 
the Latin diphthong that is pronounced as a long I. And then let's go across to the P of opera and down to the E of tenant and down to the R of arepo. We now have the word S-A-E or S-I P-H-E-R. So S-A-E-P-H-E-R, the P being both a P or a P-H. Cipher. Sefer in Hebrew means a book. As in Sefer Yetzirah, the book of creation. And a letter, as in the letter S or the letter A here. And as a number, the letter A as the number one. Specifically with respect to the letter A, and A also being the number one, we can see the possibility of gematria. In fact, the oldest use of gematria is from a cuneiform tablet that states, actually that announces that the Assyrian king, the Tsar, Sargon, Sar is in his name, Sargon II, used the letters, the numbers, of his name to construct the wall of the city he built for his new city, Dur Sharukin, modern-day Khorsabad in Iraq, about 15 miles from Mosul, current-day Mosul, which... Mosul, which in the ancient world was Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire in the 8th century before the Common Era. In this contemplation of the Rota Square using cipher or number, let's start with a name that we all recognize, Adam. Adam, the first human and the first name. Adam in Hebrew is made up of three letters, uh, A, D, and M. So Aleph, Dalit, and Mame. And the value of each of these letters as cipher or number is A is 1, uh, D is 4, and M is 40. Or if we eliminate the 0, we could make that a 4 as well. And so they total 45. 45, uh, if we add 4 and 5, we get 9. So it's n number 9 in, uh, in Hebrew is tet, which is a palindrome. It means a snake. And, of course, we know that Adam had some contact with a snake. So if we look at the central cross of the Rota Square tenant, the T-E, T is 4, and the letter E we've seen before as He is 5, so we get the 45. So Adam is related to the T-E in uh, the Rota Square. N Nun in Hebrew means 50. So there's another 5. So if we take Adam and we add that 5 from Nun, 
we get 14, and again the 14 is 5. So, so we have a cross of 5s in the center of the rota square if we just do the cipher value. And we have a cross, an outward uh, cross uh, of 4s uh, that indicate uh, the doors or doorways into and out of the square. 4 means the letter D, and the letter D in Hebrew is a door. We will come back to this 4. That's a doorway. A doorway we could think of into being inside and outside. It's a doorway that opens east, west, north, south, into and out of the rota square. And we're also going to come back to the number 9, which is uh, Adam's number 4 plus 5. Let's now take a look at the central cross of the rota square again. And let's uh, pay attention to the P of Oprah and the R of Oprah and the R of Aleppo and the P of Aleppo. Let's look at the letter P, which is pay in Hebrew, and it's the number 80. And it means mouth, and of course out of the mouth comes words. And the E here we know now is hey, which is the number 5, and R is the number uh, 200 and it's Raish, it's called Raish, which means to begin, and it's the first word of Genesis in the beginning. So if we take this number, 285, and we add the digits together, we get 15. Interestingly enough, 15 is 10 and 5. 10 in Hebrew is Yod. 5 we know is He. If we add the 5 and the 1, we get the, the number 6. We get the letter 6, Vav. So we have Yod, He, Vav, and we come right back to the 5 again. And um, we have Yod, He, Vow, hey, the name of God here. So this is a very interesting uh, uh, thing because uh, we now have a complete picture. We have Adam, the number 45. We have Yod, hey, Vow, hey, which is the 15 then the 5 and 1 of the vow, and the 5 of the hey. So we have being itself, the word for being, the word that Moses learns from the burning bush. And we have zelem, which is the number 77, which can be made into 14, and then from 14, the 4 and the 1, 5, which is the image of God. So we really uh, have the complete picture at this point. So this is the earliest use of gamatria that we know. The name Sargon means Sar, the ruler, just like the Sar in the Rota square. 
and sar also has the connotation of administrator and gan is the assyrian and assyrian is a semitic language just like hebrew means garden in hebrew the word garden is gan as in gan eden the garden of eden sargon's the second's name uh, the number on the cuneiform tablet is one six two eight three and the text says it's the number of cubits cubit is a latin word for elbow to build a wall so a cubit is the length of an arm from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger about 18 inches However, this number is much more about uh, shape than just the length of a wall. Disguised in this number is the Assyrian and Babylonian knowledge, a knowledge that dated from about 1800 B.C. to 1600 B.C. We have it on tablets, or roughly 600 to 1,000 years, a millennium before uh, Sargon II. They had the knowledge of both Pi and Phi. So if we look at this number, 16283, basically there's two series of numbers in 16283. One is the series 123, etc. The other is the series of even numbers that alternate with the series 123, and that begins with the number 6, 8, etc. So if we were to take 1, 6, 2, 8, 3 out 8 places, we would have the number 1, 6, 2, 8, 3, 1, 0, 4. And if we think of this number as a creation, as a manifestation, we can think of it as a manifestation of shape. In the number 16283, the 123 gives us the shape of the triangle, the pyramid. 8 gives us the shape of the cube. 16 gives us the number of phi, which is the shape of the golden triangle. And if we take it out uh, the larger number, the, uh, the, the eight places, uh, 1, 6, 2, 8, 3, 1, 0, oh, 4, so that's eight places out, we get from the 3, 1, 0, oh, 4, pi, and from pi, of course, the circle. Four gives us the shape of the square. So the numbers uh, here, uh, in effect, as we know from the Greeks, from Pythagoras, who, by the way, lived in Babylon, and a student, Plato, they, th th this leads to geometry, or the shapes of manifestation. So Sargon the II's number, name, is about the creation of shapes necessary to build a city. The wall equals the straight line. Two, the parallel lines. One, two, three, the triangle. Four, the square. One point six, 
or one six the rectangle three one three one zero four the circle so this is uh, really quite interesting that a name converted to a number can give us the whole flow of if you wish being into manifestation and there is an old um, Babylonian creation story which is called the Enuma Elish and there is just such a creation from nothing in that uh, story uh, that story that was probably used for uh, the breaking in of the new year in Babylon Also, if we bring back the Potok Square from the Roman War Office in Dura Europa by replacing the R and the S in Rotas with the P and the C, so it looks like Potok, we're able to get Pi because the letter C is the number 3 and 1 and 4, 3, 1, 4. So we have there uh, pi, the possibility of the circle. Also, the S is, of course, 3, 1, and the A is 1, and the T is 4. So we have, very interestingly, from the war office, the Roman military or whom, whomever was studying that Potok Square was in touch with, with Pi. It's amazing. If we go to line two with Oprah with the 22, we get the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And the belief there is that the basis of all of creation was this lettered alphabet. And so the opera, the works, the whole thing is uh, connected to this 22. And if we go to tenant 23, uh, we, if we were to go back to our picture of the apple cut horizontally, we get a picture of man. We get the... Uh, pentagram. We also get the Vitruvian man, as well as uh, the possibility of uh, four and five, which is Adam. Now let's go back to the very beginning of this film and look at the first word of Genesis Torah, Bereshith, in the beginning. And let's look at it from the perspective of Gamatria. We have the first, this first word, Bereshith, made up of the Hebrew letters Bet, which is a B, Resh, which is an R, Aleph, which is an A, Shin, which is an S, Yod, which is a, a Y, and Tav, which is a T or a TH in Hebrew. The B is the preposition in, so usually it's translated in Reshith which is beginning, in the beginning. Altogether, there are six Hebrew letters here in this word, Bereshith, including Resh, which we know is begin and is like Rosh Hashanah, uh, begin the new year, the new year. It's new and it's begin. 
Now let's convert the letters of Bereshith into numbers. So the letter B, Bet in Hebrew, is 2. Resh in Hebrew is 200, but let's drop the zeros, uh, which was, is done with gematria, and have a 2 there. The Aleph, or the A, is 1. The Shin is 300. Uh, so let's drop the zeros again and have the, letter, the number 3. And the Yod, uh, the 10th, is the 10th letter. So we have a 10 there. And the TH is Tav, which is 400. So let's drop the 4 there. And if we add these letters, 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3, plus 10, plus 4, we get 22, which is the number of the letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And we know from the Jewish tradition, the belief is that the 22 letters of the alphabet are how creation takes place. So we can now translate Bereshith as bara, create, the creation of creation through the 22, through the letters of this word, which make up, uh, in, in short, uh, the 22 letters uh, of the Hebrew alphabet. And interestingly, we have the beginning letters, Aleph and Bet, and we have the a, a sort of mid, middle letter, a very important letter, Yod, the 10. And then the last three letters of the uh, Hebrew alphabet, which are Resh, Shin, and Tav. So, finally, what if we took the letters the letter R, and we moved it in front of the T, which is the last letter of Bereshit, pronounced T-H, the T or the T-H is Tav. And what do we get if we read it backwards with the R, the T, and the S?